On a beautiful autumn evening along the banks of the Boise River, the Boise State Broncos are back home on their signature blue turf where they have won 58 straight regular season games. Tonight's would-be giant killer, the Toledo Rockets, who are 3-0 on the road this season. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Bronco Stadium as tonight the Boise State Broncos welcome in the Toledo Rockets out of the Mid-American Conference. It's the second home game of the season for the Broncos. I'm Dave Harbison, and my broadcast partner tonight is certainly very well known in this part of the country as we welcome in Joe Glenn, the former head coach of the Montana Grizzlies and the Wyoming Cowboys, to welcome him to the WAC Sports Network team. And Joe, a week ago, the Broncos opened conference play by dismantling New Mexico State 59 to nothing, and yet they fell from third to fourth in the AP poll. Well, I don't get it, Dave. Oregon's had a couple. They leapfrogged Boise in the polls from four to three, and uh, Oregon's had a couple simple wins. They beat Portland State, a lower division team. They beat New Mexico, who's over. Uh, Boise State has got a quality win over Virginia Tech on the road. They've also beaten Oregon State, and they've beaten Oregon the last two years with a lot of the same players. And there will obviously be a change at the top of that poll after Alabama lost to South Carolina earlier today. Now, Chris Peterson and company have always been very good about blocking out distractions and staying focused. That process is made easier when you have senior leaders like he does at wide receiver in Austin Pettis and Titus Young. These guys get lost in the shuffle around Kellen Moore sometimes, but they're consistently outstanding. Dave, these are two of the best boys boys he's ever had. Titus Young really brings a spirit to the team and Austin Pettis, the coach says, come crunch time, he's the greatest player he's ever had. And together, between the two of them, they've posted 60 touchdowns wearing the orange and blue. Yeah, they really get it done. On the flip side for Toledo, they have a very opportunistic defense, but whether they can hang with the Broncos or not tonight may depend a lot on what they get out of their two young quarterbacks. They are young. One's a sophomore, Austin Danton, and one's a freshman, Terrence Owens. Austin Danton is 3-0 and as the starting quarterback with a quality win over Purdue at Purdue. And then they bogged down last week, got down 17 to nothing to Wyoming, and they brought Terrence Owens off the bench. He rallied the team, but it was a little too late. And as noted, the Boise State Broncos have had a lot of success on the blue turf at home, and a rabid fan base is a big part of the reason why as well. We'll have more on that as we get you ready for the Boise State Broncos and the Toledo Rockets. Sports Network College Football is brought to you by Hollingshead Eye Center. Visit HollingsheadEyeCenter.com and take the LASIK quiz to see if you are a LASIK candidate. Nampa Floor. Go to GetFloor.net for Bronco Nation savings. Chicago Connection, the official pizza of the Boise State Broncos. AAA Idaho, where your membership means more. Lithia Ford, we want your trade. LithiaFordBoise.com. Cap Ed, where membership supports education. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15%. Call GEICO at 1-800-947-AUTO or visit GEICO.com. Winners of 18 in a row overall, and that is now the longest winning streak in the country. The Boise State Broncos on the signature blue turf here at Broncos Stadium getting ready to take on the Toledo Rockets. They are affectionately known as Bronco Nation, this rabid group of supporters that rallies around this football team. With more on them, let's check in with the third member of our crew, Jenny Kavnar. Yeah, Davey, big secret to Boise's success in this last decade has been their 12th man. Boise State fans take their job very seriously. They even follow a color-coded chart that's been on the paper every Friday, dictating where to wear orange and where to wear blue. I talked to Coach Peterson yesterday, and he said that he comes from And speaking of Chris Peterson, the fifth in his fifth season now as the head coach of the Boise State Broncos has had tremendous success in, with this program, taking over for Dan Hawkins 
53 and 4 his record second year for Tim Beckman a young head coach just 45 years old for the Toledo Rockets he's the son of a coach and comes from a pretty good coaching lineage having coached under the likes of Urban Meyer and Jim Tressel just about set to go here at Bronco Stadium the Toledo Rockets have won the toss and deferred so they will kick it off to the Broncos and Titus Young back to receive it for the Broncos takes it at the six yard line across the 25 and knocked down right there 27 yard line will be the first spot of attack for the Boise State Broncos led by the junior quarterback Kellen Moore where's number 11 six foot 186 pound junior out of Prosser Washington and he is really just uh, done all kinds of wonderful things with this program. They weren't blown away with him initially watching him work out coach Glenn and they finally got him in some practice situations and when the bullet started flying he really started to show. I call him the mild mannered reporter for the Idaho Statesman. He's the Clark Kent of college football. One of the best quarterbacks in the United States Kellen Moore. Doug Martin is the tailback in the eye formation behind Moore who rolls to throw over the middle has a man wide open that's caught by Austin Pettis right about midfield and down to the 45 yard line let's take a look at that Boise State offense and it is in gear one of the most prolific and productive around the country look at the offensive lineman led by Nate Potter that big uh, left tackle is among the key guys in that group and then the backs and receivers for Boise State are exceptional we already talked quite a bit about Titus Young and Austin Pettis Doug Martin is the starter at running back Jeremy Avery will see quite a bit of action at that spot as well more out of the shotgun fires out of here complete to his tight end and that is good for a game and let's take a look at the Toledo defense now there are the big guys up front they are missing a real key player in Alex Johnson. He's their best front four defender. He's out after suffering a facial fracture. The linebackers are really good. Isaiah Ballard, Don Moles, and Archie Donald. And Boise State back on the attack on a running play. We'll pick up the first down. Moles in on the tackle, number 32. Coach Glenn, when we talked to the, the Boise coaches, they were very impressed with this linebacker core for Toledo. Love all three of them. They make plays in the run and the pass. They, they take great pass drops, zone drops for the most part, but uh, Moles has got, I think, three interceptions on the season already. Once again, it's Martin, the deep back in this single back set. More on the extended handoff, and oh, Martin has a hole across the 25 20, breaking to the corner of the end zone, up, 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 up. diving for the pylon, and marked out of bounds just inside the five yard line. They motioned their tight end combination fullback to a fullback set and ran a power play off the left side, took it all the way. They say he stepped out on the four yard line, but he never got touched till he got to the four yard line. He almost took it all the way without getting touched. And yeah, they really opened up a nice hole, and then he, he, with the running back awareness, was able to, to burst it out, take it out to the left side, and finally pushed out of bounds at the four. So it's first and goal with Jeremy Avery now in the game at running back Wildcat. for. The Boise State Broncos out of that wildcat formation indeed. And here is Avery, uh -oh. the senior, running right side, trying to get to the corner of the end zone, and does. Touchdown, Boise State. He flat out ran the corner. The corner had the edge. They missed the block on him. And he put a hit inside and then ran to the pylon. And uh, they, they're just too fast for him. What a great run. Boise State will throw a lot of different looks at you, a lot of different formations, but ultimately, as you said, it comes down to speed and talent, and they have plenty of both. Executed that very well. It's got to be frustrating. We got a little voodoo going on here. They're lining up in a fake, but I think they're just going to see how Toledo aligns on it. No. No, they are going to uh -oh. run this play. They got Austin it. Pettis will <laughs> dive into the end zone, and that is a two-point conversion for the Broncos as they show a little uh, show a little extra maybe for the the film for the, the tape for the next opponent down the road you never know when it might be needed opening drive a big success for the Boise State Broncos they take an eight nothing early lead here's a trivia question for you 
A touchdown run by Jeremy Avery. Two-point conversion run by Austin Pettis. Boise State draws first blood an eight to nothing early lead. It's time now for the Bronco Motors Hyundai keys to the game. Idaho's finest since 1971. Coach? Well, we think that for any chance Toledo has to win tonight here in Boise, they got to continue that number eight in the nation toward pace of taking the ball away from their opponents. I say Boise says nothing doing. So, but if the Rockets have any chance, they've got to get the turnovers. If for Boise State Broncos doing what they do, get dialed in, play with high energy, play fast, and they are off to a super start. It's eight to nothing here, and I don't even think everybody's in their seat yet. Bronco Motors, check us out online anytime at Bronco Motors. Dot com. Toledo Rockets are very good at the takeaways, 16 of them, and a plus seven in turnover margin this year. But boy, focus, and, and you talk about being dialed in, and Coach Peterson was very happy with how they came out against New Mexico State in their first game really out of the spotlight, creating their own energy. I think that Alabama result might have helped ah, a little bit, too. You got it. <laughs> Let's move it up. And now Toledo Rockets on the uh, return out to the 20-yard line, 25, and out to the across the 30-yard line. For Toledo, I believe that's Bellinger. Check it. Check it. It's Isaiah Ballard on the kickoff return. You know, having moved the kickoff back to the 30-yard line, Dave, it's made kickoff cover really, really tough. It's really tough to cover 70 yards and hold him inside the 30-yard line. It'll be Austin Dan, the quarterback. Coach, how many times have you seen a linebacker as a kickoff return? Man? <laughs> the, the Not very often. Level. High Not school, very maybe. Often. But college? Isaiah. Yeah, that's Big dude. Yep. Isaiah Ballard's a linebacker. Austin Danton is the quarterback. 6'2", 189 pounds, sophomore. And give it off to Adonis Thomas on first down. And he is overwhelmed by that Boise State defensive line. Toledo offensively. We told you about Austin Danton already. Here are the big guys up front. Led by the center, Kevin Kowalski, senior out of Macedonia, Ohio. He's really a good one. And there are your backs and receivers. Eric Page, number 12 is the key guy. He's their big playmaker. There's Danton on a little bit of a roll. Under pressure and down he goes. Winston Venable in on the hit along with Shea McClellan. The, this Boise State defense, they have quality and quantity. They're really, really good. Here are the guys up front. Shea McClellan among them had the, the sack there. Linebackers. And then the secondary is experienced and talented as well. Playing a nickel defense. Third down and 13 for the Toledo Rockets. Boise, straight, try, Boise State trying to get that early three and up. Danton to throw, oh. and down he goes again. <laughs> what a ferocious pass rush. Right up the middle. Yeah, I believe that, it's that Hall. That time it's Billy Wynn. Billy Wynn, 90. excuse me. There it I, is. I'll tell you what, if you're an opposing wow. coach or quarterback, and you see all these 90s coming at you, you have nightmares about guys wearing uniforms with number 90-something. Billy Wynn, 90. Las Winters, Vegas, Nevada. Winterswike, 98. Baker, 97. McClellan, 92. Root, 96. They just keep coming after him. Wynn never broke stride, boy. He came off quick and beat his man and was on him before he finished his drop. The Toledo punter is Vince Penza. And it's Potter back to receive it for Boise State. He has it at the 45 across midfield, across the Toledo 45-yard line to about the 43. So great field position on possession number two for the Broncos. Tackled by one of those linebackers, Archie Donald, doing special teams duty. So you know special teams is important to them when they're using their starting linebacker to cover punts. Well, and there we have an injured Bronco down there in, in, on this play. And talking about that Boise State defense, you know, they, they're they number one in the nation in total defense. They are just relentless. The, the coaches always talk about how good they are. You look at opponents' yards per game. And Boise State right at the top of the list, followed by Arizona, TCU, Iowa, and Ohio State. And you were just talking about having some of those regular guys play on special teams because you're trying to get, get uh, some better production out of those units. And this is the concern. Byron Hout, one of your starting linebackers, one of your leaders on defense, is the injured player. Getting up and looks like maybe he's going to be okay. We'll looks see. Like he's on his own. And uh, he was rubbing his knee a little bit, which was concerning. But uh, he's walking off on his own power and probably take a playoff and be back in. Gerard Johnson, Ryan Winterswike, also key members of the Boise State uh, regular units that look at, take a look at the injury here, coach. Right in the back. 
It's looking good on the sideline. Kind of shoving the trainers away. <laughs> That's a good, that is a good sign. <laughs> Won't take his helmet off. He's afraid they'll take it. <laughs> good job, Hout. Great field position. Empty backfield now with Doug Martin, the starting running back, flank up far to the left side of the field. So four wides, left, one right. Quads. Motion across. And more to throw. Has a man open along the sidelines, and that is incomplete. Coach, tell us a little bit about, from, from your standpoint, uh, if you were a defensive coordinator preparing for Boise State, all these formations and all the things that they do, what stands out? How do you prepare for it? How do you try and stop it? With Kellen Moore, they've gone more to a one back set. That time it was empty, no back set. But uh, when they're empty like that, it's basketball on grass. You're just going to spread the field and, and throw routes that, that are hard to cover, and they've got great speed. And now they're back to a one back set. The balance of this Boise State offense is really impressive too, because they can run it as well. There's a quick flip out to Titus Young, get him, in, get him the ball in some space, out of out of the bounds at about the 45-yard line, pushed out by Archie Donald. The Boise State coaches talked about wanting to be able to maybe run downhill a little bit and get some power football going, but so far it's been mostly the passing game. That's a great block by Tyler Shoemaker out in front of that. Tyler from Meridian, Idaho, right here, suburb of Boise. Nice job, Tyler. That's Chris Potter now lined up in the Wildcat for Boise State. We thought we might see this as well, and he's on the keeper and will be close to first down yardage. Push back a little bit. Really nice tackle by Mark Singer. Safety, Cinnamons in New Jersey. Really one on one and sure tackle. Watch him wrap up. Chris Potter. Two young players watching tonight. Watch how he wraps up, takes him down. Nice tackle, Singer. So we've seen Avery run Wildcat for the touchdown. Potter's been in a Wildcat. We've been uh, alerted to the fact that one or both of the backup quarter might, quarterbacks might get in and run a little bit of Wildcat. This is a run formation right here. And give it off to Martin, a little power football, trying to pick up the first down on fourth and short. Oh, looks like Martin has it. Donald and Singer combining for the tackle, but they'll move the chains. First down for Boise State. Broncos already up 8-0 in the early going here. Went big in their offense there. Two tight ends and a fullback in. Pretty good possibility they're going to run the ball or play fake. Matt Kaiserman's in the game now. 26 running back position. Two tight ends flip. Motion Pot into the boundary. Potter in motion. There it is. Moore looking that way, throws it to Potter, double and now pass. here's the double pass, throwing <laughs> it down here, and it is complete to Kyle Ifa down about the five-yard line. So Chris Peterson and company going into the bag of tricks quite a bit here in the first quarter. They are not taking the Toledo Rockets lightly at all. No shot here, but I wonder if the Sooners are watching tonight. <laughs> They've already faked the extra point, went for two. Now they run double pass off the quick screen, and... Uh, Executing as Boise always does to perfection. Great play calling. Ifa, of course, is the one who caught the uh, the pass uh, from the punter on the fake punt and the Fiesta Bowl, the last one, <laughs> led to the victory over TCU. Fun to watch. Martin and Avery split backs. Here we go. Well, check it. It's Avery in the uh, in the shotgun again out of the Wildcat. Avery on the carry to about the one. Pulling out all the stops. Lots of formations. Uh, what's that, the third snap we've seen now of Wildcat? Well, what do you do as a coach then defensively? Do you try and match up with their personnel, or yeah. how, how can you possibly? They're subbing four guys here now down on goal line, so they're anticipating. But, yeah, you have to try and match up. You just don't want to end up with 13 guys on the field like Tennessee. <laughs> Martin is the <laughs> primary running back now as we get a little bit different look yet from We're Boise gonna, State. It should be a run according to the formation, but yep. nope, play nope. action. Play pass. action for Martin or for Moore. Is it touchdown, to Tommy? End zone. Nope, that's Kyle Ifa. Hey, Ifa, huh? They have four quality tight ends. They use them all for a lot of different situations. Boise State on the board now leading at 14 to nothing. I would tell you, Dave, this kid throws the most receiver friendly ball I've ever seen he I mean it's it, the nose is up it's a tight spiral lots of touch on the ball uh, incredible quarterbacking 
Brotsman, the veteran kicker, in to try and add the extra point the conventional way this time around. <laughs> he does so, and it's 15 0 Boise State on top of the Toledo Rockets. Beautiful night and a great start for Boise. Coming right back. Couple of first quarter touchdowns for the Boise State Broncos jumping on the Toledo Rockets 15 to nothing. The 2010 WAC soccer tournament headed for Ruston, Louisiana, November 4th, 5th, and 7th. The top six teams in the conference will compete for the tournament title and automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. All session tournament tickets are on sale now and can be purchased through WACSports.com. Trevor Harmon will kick it off for Boise State. Isaiah Ballard, the linebacker, again on the return and has a little bit of room. Across the 30, 35, and pushed out of bounds at the 42 yard line. Check it, that's Eric Page on the return. He's the guy that we've been really wanting to see. They like to find ways to get him the football. He's 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 one of the few on this Toledo Rocket team that you can really classify, I think, as a game breaker. So Boise stayed up 15 to nothing, seven and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, and Toledo's had the ball for three plays, went three and out on their first possession. Wildcat. Wildcat now for the Toledo Rockets as well. Trying to get a spark. That's some Morgan Williams, their backup uh, tailback out of the Wildcat, but Boise State stands their ground, not much doing there. Winterswike, McClellan, those two defensive ends, just a handful for any opposing offense. Particularly one that's young, this Toledo Rocket team, you know, off to a, maybe a surprising start at three and two with three road wins, but coach Tim Beckman says, we knew he had some talent, but we're so young. Denton back in at quarterback, one back set. Second and 10, it's Page in motion. Danton with time and over the middle and the pass is complete. Finds David Flulin, Fluellen rather, out of the backfield for completion. About eight yards on the play. Flulin is uh, banged up on the play as well. Took a high throw and got took one in the ribs or perhaps knocked his wind out. A crossing route and underneath route. Uh, not a long gain, maybe seven. Six yards. Bronco basketball is just around the corner with tip off less than a month away. New head coach Leon Rice will lead an experienced group with seven seniors returning, led by all whack forward Daquan Montreal. Call 208 426 4737 and ask about the no ticket goes unused program, one of the key benefits of being a season ticket holder. They're going to love Leon Rice. Known that man a long time, came in from Gonzaga, number one chair. It was old home week as we uh, toured the athletic offices around here yesterday for Coach Joe Glenn. He was high-fiving and giving hugs uh, all the way around. Leon Rice and some of the former football coaches that he's worked with. This coaching fraternity is just amazing. It is. It's when you're in it a long time, you either coach with or against or recruit with or against. Uh, most all of them, and uh, it is a great fraternity at that. Love them all. Opportunity to move the chains now for the Toledo Rockets. Third and four for Austin Danton. Empty set, and it'll be a throw. Fires it out here and complete along the sidelines and should be good for the first down. That's Adonis Thomas coming out of the backfield to make that grab. Or empty backfield. Start, Winston, started Venable, Winston was all over him just after the throw. <laughs> He's taken some shots already, but great rush by Venable. The nickelback coming off the edge. New set of downs for the Rockets here. Danton's completed 64.5% of his passes this season, but he's had some problems with turnovers. Fires it out here and complete and open in space. Oh. I believe that's Page. It is. He shakes loose from a would-be tackler and 
Should have another Toledo Rocket first down. Byron Hout back into the game. That's good news. He's able to make the tackle there. Take a look at uh, how they were able to get the ball to Eric Page. It's a bubble screen to the wide side of the field. And he overran the tackle. And good save by Hout. He'd have gone for a touchdown had he not made touchdown saving tackle. Rockets are coming off of a loss to Wyoming last week where they had seven drop passes and ten penalties and their coaching staff thought they were very sloppy. Here's Danton on a keeper. He'll pick up a little bit of yardage three maybe four and in some of their games early in the season on the road all of them where they had success in particular at Purdue. He made some plays with his legs. He has scored four touchdowns Dave. Um, that was a quarterback power play where he fakes and then counters back and they kick out and pull the backside guard around and Dan, tough kid. He's not afraid to run it up in there. We do expect to see uh, Terrence Owens in at some point. He's the backup quarterback. Second and about seven for the Toledo Rockets. Quick hitter over the middle of the page. Has some opening and is dragged down at the five-yard line. We talked about him. Jerron Johnson makes the tackle, but we talked about Page. He's the one guy that really scares you. He's the game breaker. That's a quick play action pass. They're trying to beat the pass rush, and they're going to start throwing some quicker passes, and that one opened up right now on a slant. And they're, they're going no huddle here, and here's Danton on the keeper and into the end zone. That's a touchdown for the Toledo Rockets. They went no huddle, keeping the, the tempo going, and it pays off with a touchdown. Great job of answering. Trying to take a little wind out of that Boise sail. And uh, they marched it right down. A really good execution. A little trickery of their own. Look out here. It's spread out. They're going to go for the, the two point play as well. And hey. they get it as well. No nope. penalty on the play, though. Hold on. Bill Klaus is the, is the kicker. Ball was not made ready for play. It's a five yard penalty. Uh, so that will come back. Got to get a whistle. Quarterback's got to wait for a whistle. Uh, ready for play whistle quarterback would know that kicker in that same kind of situation masquerading as a quarterback probably would and now Tim Beckman the head coach of the Toledo Rockets has picked up a 15 yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for his actions along the sideline getting in the face of the official he is a little hot under the collar coach what coach would ever do that <laughs> <laughs> uh, just don't go to the other side of the 50 that's all <laughs> is still pleading his case but the end result of all this is going to be a very very long extra point try. Well they executed the play perfectly and I think Boise State was ready but they're ready for whistle they're ready for play whistle hadn't blown and the quarterback pulled the ball so it comes back with the penalty. They have to wait until right. let's look at the white hat with his hand up. Yeah, I, I guess they did not give, actually give him the, the 15 yard penalty. Klaus Klaus in to try the extra point now. A little further back. Shouldn't be a problem and is not a problem. Toledo Rockets answer. Boise State still out in front of the first quarter, 15 to 7. Purchase the latest gear from your favorite team at waxsports.com. Show your school spirit. A beautiful night at Bronco Stadium in Boise, Idaho. 15-yard penalty has been now assessed on the kickoff, so Boise State's going to get great field position. Look at the Toledo scoring drive. Danton gets the touchdown, but a lot of the work was done on that drive by Eric Page. The kick return and then the big passing play. This will be Titus Young at the 22. Across the 30, a little bit of a seam. Look out. There's Titus across midfield. Dragged down from behind at about the 45-yard line. So it'll be great field position for the Boise State Broncos. Titus Young. Talk about the receiving duo of Young and Pettis, but you have to factor in Titus Young as a rusher. He has seven touchdowns in his career, plus two return touchdowns. He is just a terrific weapon. These two guys, I... It's good a tandem as there is in college football. I'd have to think, yeah. Two terrific, and like we said, they've accounted between each other for 60 touchdowns. Running, receiving, what a tandem. Sensational. 
A lot, and they really set the tone in a lot of ways, especially Austin Pettis. The coaches just rave about him from a standpoint of being a leader, of being a film guy, being ultra competitive and really smart when it comes to offensive game plans. Kellen Moore on the quick out to Titus Young. That is complete. Let's check in down on the sidelines. Here's Jenny Kavnar. Yeah, guys, we saw Coach Tim Beckman for Toledo get a little heated on that last call there <laughs> when they went to go for two points. You know, one thing when you look at his coaching tree, it's no surprise. Urban Meyer's in there, Jim Trestle's in there. This guy's been an assistant for 21 years, and he's either played or coached for a combined 13 national championships. But with all those elite coaches, he said he most admires his father, also a coach who he grew up with. He said it's given him 45 full years of football experience. He even has his dad check some film and evaluate the upcoming team. Thanks, Jenny. It's Jeremy Avery on the carry for the Broncos. Not much gain there. Well, coaching get, kind of gets in your blood and you know, talking to Tim Beckman about his father and his relationship there and then all the coaches that have sort of supported him or mentored him along the way. We get a sense of what, what, what a family and fraternity is. We already talked about that. Uh, to some degree. Here's a big third down play coming up now for the Broncos. Third and four. It's Doug Martin in the backfield. Tough runner. Linehan in motion. Ah! More, plenty of time. Fires it over here for Pettis, and it is incomplete, almost intercepted off the tip. And Chris Peterson was telling us that the Toledo Rockets are really good off the tip. They practice the tip drill, and they've had several interceptions on tip balls this year. We're not bringing in the punter. Uh, the ball was a little high, but I think Austin probably catches most of those. But uh, Boise has left their offense on the field, so it's fourth and four. A good part of the field to go for it. Fourth and four, just inside the 40-yard line. Empty backfield for Kellen Moore. Nickel defense, got an extra defensive back in for a linebacker. More steps up into the pocket, fires it out here. Great coverage on the part of the Toledo Rockets, Rockets, and they will turn the ball over on downs. It was intended for Titus Young. So the, the, the Toledo Rockets coach give them some credit after getting a hit with a couple of haymakers by Boise State. 15 to nothing down, they come back, drive it down the field, and then they get a stop. Referee rubbed their gloves off, checked to look and see if they're okay. They came back fighting. Well, they talked about it. You know, you're going into the Lions then to a certain degree, taking on the fourth ranked team in the country at their place. But he said, hey, it's an opportunity. And that's the way they've tried to tried to approach it. They played with Ohio State, Virginia Tech. They Here's Ter on some heavyweights. Terrence Owens, the other quarterback that we've been talking about. We thought we might see him in the third series, and we do. He's got a little bigger arm than Danton does. And he's back to throw. The southpaw fires it out here to Page, and that's complete. Decent game. Hey, whichever quarterback they do, I think a, a really good idea would be get the ball to number 12. Yes. <laughs> it's in the game plan. <laughs> Big lefty steps to drop. It's a little pressure turnout route. Page, Page was a high school quarterback. He was. 134 yards per game in all purpose yards coming into this one. He's second at about three and uh, whistles and flags, and we'll stop it right there. Illegal procedure against number 74 five yard penalty still second down the Toledo Rockets page had 29 catches for 351 yards and two touchdowns coming in plus 317 yards on kickoff returns and including a 98 yarder for a touchdown. We've already seen what he's capable of here tonight. Really a good looking player out of Springfield High School right there in Toledo, Ohio. Owens on the slant, complete, about midfield for the Toledo Rockets. Guess who? Yeah, Eric Page again, George Iloka on the hit. He's got some speed. Guy got a really good gear, rides a slant. Just a quick slant, I think they're going with the quicker passes right now to try and negate the pass rush of Boise State. And so far it's been effective. Empty set, pass all the way unless it's a quarterback draw. Owens, a red shirt freshman out of Cleveland, Ohio. He's on the keeper here. A bunch of blue shirts knock him down right at the 50 yard line. Sandlot ball right there. Quarterback had nobody open. Pressure was mounting and he took off running. How about Ricky Chongachu coming in there to make the hit? Played very well 
last week. The uh, Broncos really have great depth along that front line. They're missing Michael Atkinson, who played very well last week. He's not in uniform tonight for disciplinary reasons. But Ricky Chongachu and J.P. Nisby and some of those guys get a chance to show their stuff. Second and ten. Play comes in from the sideline. Crowd's giving him a little trouble. He's signaling the plays to everybody on the field. Owen steps up in the pocket and big strong kid finally brought down about the 46 yard line. One of the officials goes down as well. It's Matt Miller in there for the Broncos. Fresh bodies in for Boise. Sub six guys get some fresh guys in or get them a watch the official here coach. Whoops. I know <laughs> the umpire. That's a tough job. I've always been thinking they ought to move the umpire back. All right. Big play here. Third and six big for play. the Toledo Rockets. Less than a minute to go. First quarter. Owens to throw. Ball is loose. Ball's out. Boise State, I believe, has it. Chase Baker, 97, hops on the loose football. There's the pressure. The quick passes were working that time. They took a little deeper drop, and the Boise State pass rush gets to him. Check out Billy Wynn. Billy Wynn knocks it loose. Chase Baker recovers. You know, the, the feel of the game I'm getting right now is that the defensive line is too much for Toledo's. Uh, Offensive line their their pass rush is just when they try and hold the ball for an intermediate yep. or longer pass It's just way too heavy on the quarterback So you're gonna probably have to stay with your short throws and then consequently your defensive backs will move up and start mugging them and uh, It'll be cat and mouse game now see what they do with their passing game Pettis in motion Avery is the setback more throwing it the other way to Titus Young completed about the 37 down to the 32 they're just carving them up offensively. I wrote that down, carving them up. It's what he does. Guy is a surgeon. One sack and one interception this year through four ball games. That'll be the end of the first quarter. The Broncos will just let the clock run up. Good start for the Boise State Broncos. Toledo got up off the deck and threatening to make a game of it, though. But the turnover could prove to be a big play as we head to the second quarter. It's the Broncos on top of the Rockets, 15 to 7. We had a chance to visit with Brian Harson, the offensive coordinator, quarter, quarterback coach for Boise, posted in his office the four things he wants most in a quarterback toughness, pocket presence, decision making, and accuracy. He doesn't want him in the bullseye. He wants him in the center of the bullseye. Uh, and they, he said that Kellen Moore's got them all, and his preparation is second to none. Of course, Chris Peterson's a former quarterback from his college days and a pretty good one at that. So the, the quarterback tree here is pretty good. Jared Zabransky was obviously very, very good, and Ryan Dinwiddie. They've had some really good ones, and Kellen Moore may be the best, best one yet. He said all the young quarterbacks want to hang around with Kellen to <laughs> yeah. see how he is preparing and what he's doing and they they follow his lead and he's just a junior first quarter numbers for Kellen Moore six of nine 62 yards and a touchdown. touchdown. Doug Martin in the backfield behind Moore this time running set. A couple tight ends in play action pass Moore steps up in the pocket throws it out here and it is caught the Broncos I believe that's Austin Pettis his arm was hit on the follow through and it took the velocity off the ball and it should have been intercepted yeah Isaiah Ballard the linebacker got a hand on it should have picked it off I think if you'll see his arm get popped there just enough to take the velocity off the football and you'll watch here ah. good concentration <laughs> on the part of Austin Pettis how about that Austin what a great focus tipped balls are hard to catch too. your timing is off and Great effort by Pettis for staying with the ball. Uh, let's see if the Broncos can cash in on the opportunity. Double reverse, Here's a little touchdown. reverse, and this is Avery around the end for the touchdown. Hardest part is the lineup for the extra point. There, great call. They knew the defense was flowing too hard. Time for a reverse, and he had a convoy out in front of him. Mm. Nice call. 
They have gone deep into the bag of tricks already in this game. And this one works to perfection. And we're this, one is, this, is, this is the tip play. Yes. The Watch tip Austin ball Pettis. to Austin Pettis. Helmet comes off, but he hangs on to the ball. Here's the extra point try now for Bratzman. Maybe we can get back to that reverse play. We'd like to see it again. Bratzman good. pops it through there. Take a look at it as we head to break. You're watching the Wax Sports Network, a production of Learfield Sports. Boise State Broncos out in front. Broncos cash in on the turnover. They go 45 yards in three plays for the touchdown. Let's go down to the sidelines and Jenny Kavanaugh. Yeah, guys, it's Billy Wynn who's kind of walking around the sidelines right now, wondering if he's going to be able to go back in. It was the big sack that ended Toledo's last drive. Some of his defensive linemen helped him off the field. Right away, trainers came over. They started kind of massaging his neck. It looks like it might be a stinger, but again, questionable on his return. Harmon will kick it off for Boise State. Page and Ballard back to receive, and this will be Page as the ball bounces into the end zone, and the Toledo Rockets will start at the 20. Billy Wynn, who Jenny was just talking about, created the turnover. Chase Baker recovered the fumble, and there's the scoring drive as the Broncos cash in in a hurry and well-designed play for the touchdown, Coach. See which quarterback comes out. It's uh, it's Owens coming out for Toledo. Danton went the first couple of series. Now it's Owens' turn. And Owen Owens shows you something here. He re he really shows a lot of flash and a lot of ability and a good arm. But he will be under duress. Either quarterback's going to be under duress from this relentless Boise State defensive line. Quick hitch out here, complete. That's a page. Great nope, defense. Check it. It's. Play. Uh, George I, George I Loco on the tackle. He faced him up and tackled the bubble screen for two yards. Second down and eight. Bernard Reedy on the, on the reception. Good looking safety. 6'3, 209. Junior out of Houston, Texas. Second and seven for Toledo. Crowd starting to get into it. Owens, they call him T.O., not surprisingly. Fires it <laughs> incomplete. Talking a lot about that Boise State defense, Coach. Uh, they are really getting after it. Take, let's take a look at some of what they've done so far in this game. Good pressure. There's the turnover that resulted in the last touchdown. They are really good. They are really deep. And they just play with such intensity. Big third down here. Third and seven. Owens to throw. Hit as he throws. Completes the pass. And that'll be good for a Toledo first down. James Green, number eight. On the receiving end. Boy, Owens hung in there tough that time. Come in with pressure. And I think they were manned up time so it's a crossing route right here on the right of your screen he got a big hit from Jarrell Root just as he was releasing the football watch the middle of the screen you'll see the catch had a little running room but he couldn't get upfield so the Rockets keep their drive alive out of the second unit now in there defensively for Boise State but again there's very little drop off when they do that Owens throws and it is intercepted oh. and almost picked off <laughs> by the Broncos, Jamar Taylor. And the, the ball tipped right around the line of scrimmage, and Taylor almost came up with it. You're seeing he wants to get rid of the ball in rhythm, and uh, I don't think you're gonna see Toledo holding the ball in the pocket very long tonight. It's, they're making a point of getting some pressure on him. And they're doing it with four men. Second and 10 for Owens and the Rockets. Bronco defense trying to dig in. Go with a running play on second and ten. That's Morgan Williams. 
the backup tailback, and he's pushed back a little bit. And things get both teams getting a little feisty. We've uh, Toledo's had now 10 rushes for minus nine yards. I don't. Quick passing game is probably what they're going to focus on here. On third and nine, Owens out of the shotgun. Changing the play, perhaps. Four man rush. Back to throw and hit as he throws, and that will be incomplete. Boise State uh, gave him a look and maybe took it away and then came with a lot of pressure. And the pressure is the thing, Coach, right now is whichever quarterback is playing for Toledo is, is just facing a relentless pass rush. And it's coming mostly with standard four man rush. They're just really athletic up front, quick off the ball, relentless, I think, is what Coach Kwiatkowski kept saying. Pete Kwiatkowski, the defensive coordinator for the number one total defensive team in the nation, the Boise Broncos. Penza to kick it. Potter the return man. Uh, we Flag as they run into the kicker. Ball, ball will be down to about the 43 yard line, but depends how they take a look at this in terms of the penalty. Does it set up a first down or not? Personal foul. It's first down. Yep. Mm -hmm. That won't make Chris Peterson very happy. He would have liked to flatten out, uh, but he did get pushed by it. Yeah, it, did, it didn't look as bad looking at it on replay as it did the first time right. around seeing it live. But still, it goes as a 15 yard penalty and keeps the drive alive for Toledo. Right. Cedric Phoebus got a little right. too deep on his rush. The three guys in front of the punter is, are called shield. And the left shield <laughs> pushed him, and I think it took his momentum right into the kicker's foot. Couldn't flatten out. Danton back in at quarterback now for the Rockets. They've changed things up once again. He is slightly more experienced than Owens, but not that much. But he's won some big games on the road already this year. Danton on the carry on the quarterback keeper. Gets about five yards. Let's head back down to the field and bring in Jenny Kavnar. Jenny. You guys were talking about the defensive coordinator, Pete Krakowski. You know, nothing really phases this guy. His defense is ranked number one in the nation, as you've mentioned, and he wasn't really that impressed by it. He said, you're only as good as your last performance. He's constantly grading the way these guys play, not just by their stats on the field, but all of their opportunities and their missed opportunities. So every single play he's watching with a very close eye. He said they had more mistakes than a 59 to nothing win last week than any other game this season, guys. Danton connects with Page. That'll be close to a first down for the Toledo Rockets. Ben benefiting from the penalty on the punt play. There's Pete Kwiatkowski, the defensive coordinator for the Broncos. Does a great, great job with this unit. It gets him to play exceptionally hard. Pete was a great player here himself. Yep. It is good for a first down for the Rockets. Here's Danton over the middle, intended for Page, who heard some footsteps there. He's starting to draw a crowd, isn't he? <laughs> Byron Hout had him in had him in his sights. <laughs> he tiptoed in there for that ball there. Yeah, he sure did. Look at how oh uh -huh. Hout was about to lay him out. Uh -huh. Was able to hold up. You know, the Boise State coaches talk a lot about, you know, we don't care what the score is. We, we're grading on play by play or during the course of a game, what benchmarks do we achieve? After this play, I want to have you talk a little bit more about that, too. Danton out of the shotgun for Toledo on second and seven. Quick hitter out here to Page. Complete, very short game. Great pursuit. I think he got four. Uh, you know, really different. They don't. So much grade of play in like the old days, like one or two or zero. They grade on production. Yep. Um, how, how how many sacks? How many pressures? Tackles, assisted tackles, hurries, all those things. They want to produce, and they're more, they're grading more of the game within the game, exactly. and talking about their individual units that they're coaching and dealing with. You're exactly right, Dean. All right, third and six. Broncos trying to get a stop here. A little motion to Danton to throw. Has a little bit of time and has a man open. That is complete for the Rockets. And 
dancing down the sidelines is Morgan Williams. What is his own defense? I can't. We had a breakdown in the wide side of the field, and I can't see where. What happened if we get a look at that? At the top of your screen, had a back slip out in the flat in the corner, chased us an in route. Consequently, the back in the flat was wide open, and they got a good gainer down to the 20 yard line. A missed assignment defensively, or did I think the corner didn't stay home. Okay. Chased the slant. In the red zone now for the Toledo Rockets. First and 10 from the 20. Danton fires it out here. Oh! It is intercepted. Boise State comes up with a pick. That is Brandon Thompson. There's another tip ball, and that was going to be a that was going to be a completion and a more good field position for the Toledo Rockets. But don't execute, and Thompson Johnny on the spot. Exactly. They stayed bend but don't break all the way down. They stayed zone almost all the way down. Here it is. Should have had it. Jumping in there. Nice play defensively, though. Good reaction, even though it was a, a drive ball. on the football. Good job. But yeah, you stay zone defense, just hoping to make a play. Uh, you're going to get more interceptions out of zone than you do, man. And it paid off for Pete. Hung in there with his base defense. Broncos scored on the opening possession, now lead at 22 7. And here's Doug Martin on the carry across the 20, 21, maybe 22 yard line. <laughs> Boise State Broncos winners of seven of the last eight WAC titles. How many here at home in a row now? I have that somewhere. I think it's, it's just crazy. 18 in a row overall, which is now the longest winning streak in the country. In the nation. 29 straight regular season wins. It's Southwick in the game at quarterback for Boise State, too, wow. the, uh, the sophomore. We, we thought we would see both Coughlin and Southwick. First half. 37 straight home regular season wins. 36, uh, 57 rather, straight there. home regular there. season wins. That's the number you were looking Crazy. for. Crazy. 36 straight home wins in the WAC. They've never lost a, contra a WAC game at home. That is ridiculous. That's excellent football. That was just a one play appearance for now for Joe Southwick. Kellen Moore back in there. Give it off on a running play. That should be good for the first down. Doug Martin has it. Toledo reloads in the front. They're trying to use. You look at the rush yards, the Boise State Broncos really dominating there. I'm, I'm frankly, I'm surprised we haven't seen a little bit more of that because it sounded like Coach Pete really wanted to, to try and run downhill because Toledo hadn't faced a team so far that had done that. Well, they're, Toledo's hanging in there pretty tough in the run game. And uh, give it to their front. The guys are playing some tough football up front. Kellen Moore to throw. Uh -oh. Runs out of there. He doesn't run very often. Oh. <laughs> and he is a, he's a safe. very smart youngster. Literally, he's safe. <laughs> and he slides down. Wow. Good job scrambling. Kellen doesn't do a lot of that. That's not his forte. But a gain of... Terrell Anderson on the tackle. You want to call it that? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I mean, slide, kid. Got to protect the franchise, right? Exactly. Good job getting under the hit. Come to play another day. Second break. and four, the pass incomplete. Intended for Doug Martin. He was not able to handle it. The Broncos go back on the road next week. They take on San Jose State. Our same crew, Coach Joe Glenn, Jenny Kavanaugh, and myself will be there for that one. We also have, as part of our doubleheader next Saturday, on the WAC Sports Network, Nevada, taking on Hawaii out on the islands. Should be a great game. Yep. Wolfpack, very, very impressive, continuing to climb in the polls. Third and four for Boise State. Moore throws that jumping the route. Nice play by the linebacker, Isaiah Ballard. So that'll go incomplete, and uh, the Broncos will have to punt it away. It's a great play coming out of his back pedal to take the out away. Take a real quick look at this one. 
The linebacking core has been impressive. I, I, I will uh, echo the thoughts of the Boise State coaches. Is Ballard, Isaiah the guy that ran the kickoff Donald. back? Yeah, exactly he's right. He's got some quicks. That guy's Yep, he's all over athlete. the field, yeah. one of those guys. 210 pounds. Brotsman will punt it away for Boise State. First punt of the night for Boise? Yep. Nope, there's Shovel a little pass. pass, and it's wide open. Uh, Flag on the play. Yeah. Across the 40, Shoemaker will take it down to the 10 yard line. That one is probably gonna come back. <laughs> Pulling out all the stops here. Holding on the offense from the 44. 10 yard penalty, still fourth down. They got Alan Mooney on the special teams for the hold there. They have, they have really pulled out all the stops. Yeah, a lot. Brotsman on the shovel to Shoemaker. Didn't see the hold. No, I, if, we if there was a hold, I didn't see it there. Uh, but the flag came in right away. It so. did. It certainly did. It was right over the ball. I think 44 is lining up. He's the deep snapper. That's who they called holding on. So. So we'll try it again. Brotsman to kick, and this time two dropping deep for Toledo, including Eric Page. Important thing you want to do on punt return is make sure you catch the football. Don't let it bounce, especially on turf. Let it roll. Got to. Does a rugby style kick. The rugby punt. Caught by Page at the 37. Shakes Look a couple out. of tacklers. Look out, he's got open space. Penalties all over the place as Page is tackled in midfield. I'm going to go out on the limb and say Dustin Camper was clipped, number 25. That's where the flag was laying near During Camper. the return, a legal block in the back, number 19 on the receiving team. 10 yard penalty, first down. Also, media timeout. All right, we are headed to a break with the Boise State Broncos leading the Toledo Rockets 22 to 7 as dusk approaches. Broncos and the Rockets, a good one here at Bronco Stadium. Broncos leading the Toledo Rockets 22 to 7. Have you heard about the no ticket goes unused program for men's basketball? It's a key benefit of being a season ticket holder. If you can't make a certain game, no worries, as your ticket won't be wasted. Now you can exchange them for a game later in the season, so every ticket gets used during the season. Call 208 426 4737 for details. Austin Danton back in at quarterback for the Rockets of Toledo, and he completes it out here for a short gain to Eric Page, maybe two on the play, tackled by Byron Howe. Lake City High School up in Coeur d'Alene. Good football player, Byron Howe. Good to see him out there playing. He nicked his knee up a little earlier and he looks to be full speed. Danton on a give. Williams has some running room across the 45-yard line. That'll be good for a Toledo first down. A little running game going now for the Rockets. Got some shake and bake there. Made safety miss. Got another 10 yards in that run. That's a nice move. That looked like the, the Boise State off uh, defensive line might have over-pursued that one a little bit. Mm -hmm. Donis Thomas back in now as the setback alongside Danton. Danton will keep it himself and chase down from behind for the Boise State Broncos. Nice job. Tyrone Crawford that I got. Yep. Well, the Toledo Rockets are no strangers to playing against a real quality opponents, top 25 teams. You look at what they've done there and yeah, they were not a top 25 team, but they went in, went in and won in West Lafayette, beating Purdue this year. Austin Dan's had some good games on the road. No shortage of football players in Ohio. That's for sure. Danton completes it to his running back, Thomas. Thomas shakes loose from a tackler. Flag on the play. Ball out. Ball loose at the 35-yard line. Let's see if we can sort all this out. Yeah. <laughs> a lot going on. <laughs> we got a flag. 
and a fumble. And we don't know who's recovered yet, although. Looks like Boise State may have it. 13. Brandon Thompson, who came up with the interception a couple of minutes ago. Brandon's a corner from Elk Grove, California. Personal foul. Clip on the offense, number 65. That penalty is declined. Be first down. So the Broncos come up with a big turnover. Let's right take a look into at this it. run. He had a nice run going, and he fumbles yep. late in the run. You know, it was Toledo. They're, they're, we were talking about with their coaches about creating turnovers and fumbles and that kind of thing. That was just helmet on football. If we get a chance later, I want you to tell me about all those different <laughs> techniques the Toledo coaches were talking about. Okay. The tomahawk and the, the grab and punch or whatever yeah. it was. <laughs> it's got a litany of them. First and 10, Boise State. Jeremy Avery behind Kellen Moore. Avery's got the football coming around left side. Has a hole. Bursts through it. Knocked down and pushed down hard by Taekwon Page. Gain of seven. Up the 44 yard line. Jeremy's got some speed. You can see him getting to the corner in a hurry. Boy, he's really done a, a great job of, you know, second team all conference a year ago and then came into camp and and DJ Harper and Doug Martin maybe played a little better. He was third team, wasn't happy about it, but took a team first attitude. And now he's getting an opportunity again because of injury and making the most of it. Team first. Wow. Second and three. Here's Kellen Moore. Plenty of time. Completes it to Titus Young. Stop route. Should be good for a first down. Pass catch. Move the chains. Six yard gain. No pressure there, coach, but the, the uh, Boise State coaches talk a lot about toughness in the pocket, not just pocket presence, which is the thing you hear most, but toughness in the pocket. Yeah, there's so much violence coming on that pass rush, and your quarterback can't, he can feel it, but he can't look at it. You just have to be mentally tough and physically tough. Whoa. More, kind of a bootleg. More a little bootleg looking long downfield uh, as Titus Young down there. Titus goes up and comes down with the football at the one yard line. No, it's a touchdown. Kellen Moore, Titus Young. Oh my. <laughs> the defender was there for Toledo, but Titus Young just outfought him for the football. They were one on one. He had his back turned. He didn't see the ball in the air, I don't think. Pretty good fake. Fakes it to Avery. But he had to grunt a little, didn't he? Yeah. He does not have a huge arm. Boy, Titus Young just went up in traffic and got that one. It's called athlete. Fighting out, fighting away from uh, Taekwon Page. Just wanted the football a little bit more and yeah, maybe a little taller, a little better athlete. Brotsman will try the extra point. They may take a look at this for the spot, not for the okay. catch, but for the spot. I think he might have landed on him and rolled over. Yeah, that could be. Mm -hmm. Somewhat charmed on that throw, I think. Uh, help was coming on the way, and between they had him sandwiched, but Titus was too much. He out athleted both of those guys for that ball. And you know what? Killamore gave him a chance. A lot of guys throw it out of the end zone, overthrow it. He threw up a jump ball, probably knowing that he's got a terrific athlete that's going to go up and make that play. Yeah, I think you're right. It doesn't seem like there's a knee down there. He rolls over on the defender. Oh, well, there, there might have been a little knee down there, but they, they have confirmed it on the on the field, so it'll be a touchdown. There's the knee down right there, actually. It might have been down first and then up, but when in Rome. <laughs> so it's 28 to 7, Boise State out in front, pending the extra point try by Bratzman. Career touchdown catch number 19 for Titus Young. Rotsman adds the extra point. Bron Broncos go up 29-7 for 338 to play in the second quarter. Broncos Stadium. You're watching the WAC Sports Network, a production of Learfield Sports. Broncos up on Toledo 28 to 7 scoring drive after the turnover three plays 63 yards and a minute 18 touchdown pass Kellen Moore to Titus Young Trevor Harmon will kick it off for Boise State. 
Everybody getting in on the act for Boise State. They have so many weapons. Harmon puts a good leg into this one. A lot of hang time. That's Ballard at about the five. Has a little bit of running room out to across the 25, maybe 27 yard line. You know, the Toledo coaches, uh, Tim Beckman, saying, you know, you know I, I coached against some pretty good, uh, pretty good offenses and some pretty good units. I don't think I've maybe faced one with that many weapons. You start talking about Moore and Young and Pattis and Martin and Avery. Hard to corral. Too many guys, playmakers. Speed. Center the bullseye passer. <laughs> yeah, well, Austin Danton comes back in at quarterback uh, for Toledo. He's moved the team. They've just had a couple of costly turnovers, and that certainly is one thing they could not afford to do if they're going to stay in this game at all with Boise State. The fourth-ranked team in the nation, but likely to move up from there. Austin Danton on the carry. Little, if any, game. Maybe even lost a half a yard. If you haven't heard the news yet, Alabama lost on the road at South Carolina today. So the top-ranked team in the nation goes down to defeat. What, what do you think that means, Coach, as far as the overall picture is concerned? You've got Oregon and Ohio State up there, and I'm not sure there's anybody maybe until the very end of the season that can knock off either one of those guys. I but you never negative. Know. I get too negative. I think they're going to jump all the BCS teams up and uh, move Boise up there. Look at these guys. They are, they are really talented, and they've answered the bell every time they've had to go up against one of the AQ conferences. Incomplete. Oh, penalty no. on the play. Pass intended for know. Kenny Stafford. Yeah. It certainly Personal wasn't foul. a cheap hit. Roughing a passer on the defense oh, okay. 90. I, a 90. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. I thought they called it on the pass defender. I did not see the roughing the quarterback if you want to play it back. It's on Hunter White. Uh -huh. Watch the quarterback. Yeah. Maybe that's borderline, but that's that's one you do have to have to pull up on. They sending him a message. Yep. They want somebody there every play. So after the penalty, it's first and ten for the Toledo Rockets just across the 40-yard line, 246 to play first half. Broncos up 29-7. Danton on the keeper. Four yards. Chase Baker knocks him down along with Ryan Winterswijk. Boise State's won four of the last six, four straight rather, in six of the last seven games they've played against opponents from the automatic qualifying BCS schools. So that argument that they can't play with the big boys just doesn't hold water. Virginia Tech opening the year in front of that great crowd at FedEx Field. Oregon State here a couple of weeks ago. I keep going back to the two times they beat Oregon the last two years. Exactly. Who jumped over him. Go figure. That's Williams on the carry for Toledo. Not much doing again. The Boise State defensive front holding firm. Again, Chase Baker in on that one. Hunter White also along with uh, Daryl Acre. You know, there's a lot of discussion about the, the format and the, you know, nobody seems to like the BCS format except the, the schools and conferences that are involved in it and have, have the vested interest. Third down conversions for Toledo three out of six so far in the game. Big one here third and three if they can keep this drive alive and maybe put some points on the board before halftime. Pass. Danton to throw has time and is almost intercepted <laughs> should have been intercepted for Boise State he was looking for the crosser and all of a sudden here comes the ball Jonathan Brown yep. he had it right in his hands right in the bread basket didn't get his eyes on it in time he was looking hunting up a crossing route by the time he saw the ball coming it was too late pens that have booted away Broncos will get the football one more time here before the first half is over. Potter back to receive it. He's standing at his own 15. Nice punt. Very good punt. Potter will watch it backspin wow. and be downed at about the nine yard line. Terrific punt. My punter is from Cardinal Mooney High School. <laughs> Can you name anybody from Cardinal Mooney High School? Try Bob, Bob Stoops, Bo Pelini, Pelini's brother. That's a. 
Bob Stoops' dad was the football coach at Cardinal Mooney. Um, that was a nice punt. Excellent punt. So Kellen Moore will lead the Broncos back out on the field, and he has, we've talked a lot about the success he's had, but look at these numbers here, and he's on a record-breaking pace in terms of the Boise State all-time career numbers. Closing in on that touchdown mark in a big hurry. It's mind-boggling. Just 60, 70 percent. Those do include, by the way, the touchdown passes today. Here's more on a quick out, complete, stop the clock. He, he is a master at this two-minute drill, and with a minute seven remaining, you wouldn't think in a lot of cases you, that deep in your own territory you'd really be all that uh, fired up about trying to add points, but with this unit as effective and efficient as they are, they will they will make a run at it. Pedal to the metal. It's what they need to get better, and that's why they're why they're doing it. This is their chance to practice on game day. Practice this hurry up offense. Pressure. Over the middle. Austin Pettis has it. Stripped away. Oh, out, out of bounds. bounds. <laughs> that was that was that the Tomahawk or was that the, I think that was that was the Tomahawk. <laughs> the Toledo Rockets really practice this and do a lot, do a lot of great things with it, and they've created a lot of turnovers. That was Isaiah Ballard, the linebacker again, just been all over the field tonight. Tracking Austin Pettis. That's a great throw and catch. They had pressure coming in the offensive line. Backfield picked it up great. Really good job of protection in there. Yeah, ball came loose. Austin Pettis and the Broncos fortunate it goes out of bounds, so they keep the football with exactly a minute to play, and now great field position. Moore has a man wide open over on the sideline, and that is complete. Titus Young on the receiving end. Down to the field we go. Here's Jenny Kavnar. You guys are talking about Kellen Moore and how impressive his stats are. What's maybe more impressive, said offensive coordinator Brian Harson, is how this guy prepares. He is in the weight room. He's in the film room. He's in the locker room early. And every single guy on this team is always looking at Kellen. What's Kellen doing? How does he prepare? And I think it just comes back to being the son of a coach himself. He knows what it takes, not just on the field during a game, but how to prepare for the game. Yeah, Brian told us that Joe Southwick was uh, following him around like a puppy dog trying to pick his brain and see what he was doing to prepare for the game because he does such a great job at it. Kellen Moore running the two minute drill to perfection hits Austin Pettis out of bounds at the 31 yard line. Now gone 68 67 yards in but 30 seconds. And of course, the, the biggest of these in recent memory was the one at the end of the game against Virginia Tech the season opener. Oh, home culminating in a touchdown pass to Austin Pettis and one of the most anticipated college football games in a long time. It was too, and it's just fun to watch. And it lived up to its billing. Sure did. Here's more, plenty of time sitting back there in the pocket. Throws Wheel it out route. Here for Avery. Avery's got it at the 10, knocked down and out of bounds about the six. Tried to take a linebacker on him, wheeled him out of the backfield, went in the flat and wheeled it up, and Killen threw a beautiful feathered pass. Right into his hands. The Broncos are going to call a timeout and talk this one over. But this, this was terrific stuff. Explain the wheel route just a little bit, Coach. Well, the back came out of the backfield, went in the flat, and the linebacker picked him up. But rather than just run with him to flat, then he wheels, he turns, and goes up the sideline. And now the linebacker has a lot of problems running with a guy as fast as Avery. And then you got a quarterback that feathers the ball in there like that. And so we're down to the five yard line. So we've now gone from the eight yard line to the five yard line and the blink of an eye. 30 seconds. <laughs> it's uh, just fun to watch. If you're liking the passing game and you like it, I'm liking this guy to Kurt Warner. And I had a chance of last year living in Arizona to watch Kurt Warner and throw the ball with so much precision. The ball comes out on time. It's uh, what I call receiver friendly and uh, this guy is uh, a magician. A couple of tight ends in there for Boise State. Now both are flanked out to the right. Trips Martin right. in the backfield with with Kellen Moore has plenty of time. Looks over the field threw and it throws away. it away. Yeah, good idea. Titus Young in the area, but that was really one that was thrown away. Plenty of time left, still 36 seconds, and you, you live to play another down on second and goal. Smart quarterbacking. Nothing there, don't try and force it. Hey, hey, hey. 
just one interception. I mean, the, 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 the fact that they protect the quarterback so well and he makes such good decisions is just amazing. One interception and one sack all season long. Trips to quads, now four receivers to the field. Avery and then Wildcat. Here's Avery on the Wildcat. That worked for a touchdown earlier, and it works to perfection again. <laughs> How was that for a two-minute drill, Coach? They better, get, they better go get a Tennessee defense and get 13 guys out on the field. <laughs> I don't know what you going to do. These guys are fun to watch. Hard to defend all the different things they're seeing. And uh, this is a good defense. These guys... Went in, beat a good Purdue team at Purdue. Rotsman will attempt the extra point. In fairness, Toledo did give up uh, 400 yards to both Arizona and uh, Western Michigan through the air. 98 yards, and that drill, that drive was started with one, one minute, 11 seconds, it's 30 seconds. That's so Boise State now up 36 to seven as we approach halftime. Let's take a look at Kellen Moore on this play out of the Wildcat. He's there, a split out to the left. They're not even going to run at him. I bet he doesn't block. Yeah, look at him. Yeah, no. oh hum. No, I, yeah. Yeah. I did I, my job. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they, he wasn't going to crack back on any of those <laughs> linebackers. I promise you that. There's your scoring drive. Wow. We were talking about it, Coach. 90 yards, seven plays, 41 seconds. Wow. Precision of a surgeon. There's Clark Kent. Does he look like toughest guy ahead, guy? There's another guy on campus. Looks like he should have a SAE sweatshirt on or something. That's right. one of the top quarterbacks in the United States. He goes into the phone booth to change clothes and comes out with a big red S on his chest. Hey. Once again, it's Ballard and... Ballard and Page uh -oh. back to kick. Uh -oh. There's the short kick. <laughs> Ballard comes up to field it and does so, and again has some running room. This guy's fun, Isaiah isn't he? Isaiah Ballard. Wow. Tough guy. Big old shoulder pads. Let's take a look at Kellen Moore. We've been talking a lot about him, and among the active quarterbacks, he is number one in the country in terms of passing efficiency, and that's a way too complex a formula for my math skills. Case Keenum out of Houston is second, but he's out for the year with the injury. That's unfortunate. Ryan Colburn, who plays right here in the WAC, is a pretty good quarterback as well from yeah. Fresno State. It'd be fun to do a graphic of the, all the WAC quarterbacks and what they've done. Oh, there's some good ones. It's Absolutely. unbelievable. DeAndre Burrell. And Moniz. Kaepernick. Kaepernick's terrific. Certainly. Danton completes it to Williams, who has some running room out of bounds. Stops the clock about the 46 yard line, 16 seconds remaining. Now, there's a lot of football still to be played, and this is a very tough conference with some real quality teams, but you can't help but uh, looking ahead at the schedule, taking a peek to late November when uh, Boise State and uh, Nevada get together. That will be a fun one. Well, it's, you know, all signs are pointed to that game already in the WAC. It's not that Fresno and Hawaii don't count. Uh-oh. There's Page on the receiving end of a fire from Danton. That's good down to the 25-yard line. They're going to try and get up here and spike the football. Nine seconds while they try and move the chains. Toledo hanging in there and hanging tough. They're going to call a timeout. This guy, Page, won't go away. He's special. Coming up at halftime here on the WAC Sports Network. Take a look at Eric Page on the receiving end of that one. We'll have a little bit of conversation and some nice video on turning over the turf, the signature blue turf here at Bronco Stadium around the WAC. We're just talking about that and scores and highlights. Well, stats from the first half of this game. And you know, they, these Broncos get it going up and down the field sometimes like a pinball machine. They, they really make it look easy. It's not that easy as a coach. No, and it's, it's a lot of finesse. A lot of uh, really good coaching, good athletes. But you when know, it I, all think, comes I think maybe together. that's the biggest misnomer or misunderstanding about Boise State around the nation is they think it's because of the success of the trick plays that it's all finesse. This is a, you, this is a very physical football team. They are tough. I I've covered Boise football. Are gone, worked with them since 1975. This is the best team they've ever had, and they've had. Believe me, they've had some good ones. Yeah. Right. First and ten from the 25, nine seconds remaining in the first half. 
Stanton to throw. Has time, incomplete. Four seconds left. I think they mixed up. I think 83 tried to wheel that route. I guess stutter go or an out and up. And uh, he got collisioned. And a nice job in coverage by number 21. Adignati. Could not, it couldn't be. I got the Taylor. Ball number. Taylor. Tamar Taylor. Okay. Nice job, Tamar. Field goal attempt of 42 yards for Bill Klaus. Toledo's just two of eight on field goals. Yeah, Klaus like our chances take here. over the field goal kicking duties because of injury. This one's in. on the way. Hits the upright and bounces away. So that will send us to halftime. Toledo moved it down the field but couldn't cash in on the scoring attempt. 36 to 7. Boise State Broncos out in front of the Toledo Rockets as we head to the halftime break. Chris Peterson and company had a very, very good first half. Stay tuned for the Wax Sports Network halftime show from Boise. Coming up next right here on the Wax Sports Network, a production of Learfield Sports. Wax Sports Network College Football is brought to you by Les Schwab Tire Centers, doing the right thing since 1952. R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Peterson Toyota in Boise, will do almost anything. Papa Murphy's, get a big pep for just $7. Now that's a pizza. Cap Ed, where membership supports education. And by Nampa Floor, go to getfloored.net for Bronco Nation Savings. Before we kick it off in the second half, let's head down to the field, and here's Jenny Kavner. Coach Pete, we saw a little bit of everything on offense there in that first half. Were you pleased with the execution? Offense was good, yeah, and I think we played hard. We, uh, it's a good thing we got some turnovers, or I think it'd be a different game at this point. We've got to tighten up our special teams and stay away from some foolish penalties. I know that you're always competing against yourself. How do you find that this team can improve for the second half? Well, just those things I talked about. we got to tackle better. They're doing a good job of getting the receivers in space and making things happen, and we're missing some tackles on defense and special teams. We tighten that up, and it's going to help our cause. Jeremy Avery's been waiting for that moment this season that he can shine. He got it the first half. How happy are you for him? Yeah, he's a good player. Player, and uh, he'll make plays. We just got to keep getting him the ball. All right, Coach, thanks. Best of luck with the second half. We'll catch you after the game, guys. Jeremy Avery indeed having a big first half. A typical coach had by a sizable margin. Still not happy uh, with the way things went in the uh, first half. Coach, uh, looking at the, the keys to the game that we identified before the before the contest, turnovers were a big part of it. Well, I, I'm, I can see it on the board down there, and I can't see it on our monitor, but I will tell you that Boise State is winning the turnover category and uh, then that's what Toledo had to have. They just had to have an advantage in turnover category to stay with Boise in uh, what has turned out to be a, a mismatch. And then much like last week Boise State very much dialed in right from the get go wow. that, that, that terminology of bring your own energy. They, they really they talk a lot about it but they back it up too. Woo. They got the guys and they uh, I think what they used, also used the word they came out fast with high energy and they were dialed in tuned in however you want to say it. I think the word we heard over and over with they were dialed in and boy are they. Yeah, and the, I, I'm guessing that most if not all of the Boise State players uh, by the time we kicked off had heard the result from uh, South Carolina where the Gamecocks knocked off Alabama. I know that I know that they tend to you know, blot that stuff out and not really pay a lot of attention to it. But maybe just a little extra motivation because they know that maybe there's the, the window or the door might be opening just a little bit. I don't think there's any question Dave that that is motivating and they can maybe jump up a little bit in the polls and let's go second half. Trevor Harmon will kick off for the Boise State Broncos to start the second half. Special welcome to KF KOFY in San Francisco, one of our great WAC Sports Network affiliates. Glad to have all you folks with us tonight. Good one, Boise State and the Toledo Rockets. Boise State kicks it off, and that's Page coming up to uh, return across the 30 35 flag on the play. He's out at the 37 yard line. Call that a bounce return. They start up the middle, and then all of a sudden, they skew their blocking to the outside and the tailback or the returner just hits it and bounces outside and they executed it very well but it looks During like they got a turn illegal block in the back number seven back. be half the distance to the goal first down 
very hard in space when you're running everybody's running full speed to block a guy straight on in the front and sometime you catch him in the side or near the back and uh, see a lot of penalties anymore on punt cover punt return kickoff cover kickoff return. Well, Eric Page is an impressive player though just a sophomore out of Springfield High School in Toledo. He, he has got some quicks and uh, they, they also talk about how intelligent he is and uh, how, how he reads plays well. He is a good look. He's quick. And I, I think he's got a good burst as well. But I look for the Rockets now to go to the quick passing game uh, and maybe try and just be a better football team by trying to run uh, some. But I, I don't anticipate any deep throws or. Uh, and the Broncos are certainly going to work some of their second and third team guys in here in the second half. North End is trying to get them here. Yeah. A lot of noise. Marcus crowd still. There's Danton on a keeper. Picks up three, maybe four. I know they'll play a lot of the backups, so they tend to keep guys fresh anyway and want guys to have experience for the future. And I know what Coach Pete's answer would be, but if you're in his shoes, knowing what the national picture is, how much do you think about style points and how much do you put the pedal to the metal here in the second you half? You just got to believe he knows. I mean, he lives in Boise, and, uh, and I think there's a slap in the face when they got jumped by Oregon unfairly. And... Uh, he might make a statement here, not against Toledo, um, but just that I have a good football team. These guys are really talented, and we want to show you. All right, Deron Johnson's the injured player for Boise State. That's not good news, but he uh, appears to be up and maybe okay. Here's here's a look at the play, see if we can pick up how Johnson got hurt. Nobody wants to come out because the next guy will yeah. come in and do good and stay uh, in. Absolutely. Take his reps. Running up the score certainly is not Chris Peterson's style. In fact, last week in New Mexico State had a big lead at the end of the first half. Had the ball with a, more than a minute to play, all three timeouts, and knelt on the football. Well, they're still talking about production here. What yep. we talked with. Yep. Coach I mean, you still want to execute. You still want to do those kind of things. Exactly. Second down and seven for the Toledo Rockets. Running play for Williams, Morgan Williams, stopped up there by the Broncos. Byron Hout among those there, along with Aaron Tevis. Bring up a third down for Toledo. They are three of seven third down opportunities. See along the sidelines, the Boise State players are having a good time, and so are the fans. Elvis is in the building. How about that? The blue, the blue Elvis, <laughs> blue Hawaii. Seven for Austin Denton and Toledo. Page splits wide. Denton looking that way. He on wants him. Wow. Complete. Not to Page, but to James Green. Check it. It's Danny Noble, the tight end on the receiving end. That'll be a first down for the Rockets. I thought he threw it to Page. And a nice throw. Excellent effort by Austin Denton. Get it to the middle of the Noble's pretty good tight end, making the catch there. 6'5", 233. Little, little Wildcat here for Toledo. It's Williams in the Wildcat, getting the carry and across the 40 to the 42, maybe 43-yard line. Let's go down to the field and bring in Jenny Kavnar. Jenny? Yeah, guys, Coach Beckman's message going into halftime was very simple. He said, we're going to have to control what we can do. On offense, it really worked on the scoring drive, but we just have to stick within our game. Defensively, he said, we have to simplify. They're throwing everything at us, including the kitchen sink. Simplifying the defense is going to be the game plan. Back to a more standard set with Danton in the shotgun. Second down and nine. Denton the throw swings it out here. Uh -oh. it's intercepted. Intercepted. Shea McClellan's going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Boise State. I got to say, I know the quarterback's feeling bad about it, but that was a terrific play. He got off the ground. He elevated. Wow. 41 yards on the return. Interception return for Shea McClellan. Watch this play. That is some athleticism right there. And then he takes off, and they're not going to catch him. 6'3", 254. McClellan's a guy that you know, was pretty good last year that just came on like gangbusters in the spring and has carried it over here into the regular season and having a very nice year for himself. Brotsman in to try the extra point. 
He's on that production chart all over the place. Sacks, hurries, pressures, tackles, That's tackles for loss. It's a big moment for him. He'll remember that one for a long time. A pick, a pick six for Shea McClellan puts Boise State up 43 to 7. Serving up wishes dinner to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Idaho is scheduled for Monday, October 18th at the Stickle Sky Center at Bronco Stadium. The event features more than 100 Bronco student athletes who participate as servers for event guests. Visit idaho.wish.org for event details and how you can be a part of a very special evening. Trevor Harmon to kick it away for the Broncos, now leading it 43-7 to after Shea McClellan comes up with an interception return for a touchdown. The human battering ram, Isaiah Ballard. And here he comes, full speed wow. ahead. Knocked down about the 27-yard line. Oh, what a hit by Drew Wright, sophomore from Nampa. He took on a big, a big back, full speed. That's a heck of a tackle. Dog on the field. He went and that got happens the a tee. lot here. <laughs> the dog went and got the T. Oh yeah. Come every, on. every time, coach. <laughs> Come on. You, you brought enough teams into this this stadium. I didn't see that, that before. <laughs> Otherwise but occupied, perhaps. They had a, uh, They might have had enough chances against us. Dave Harbison, Joe Glenn, Jenny Kavnar, your broadcast <laughs> team from Bronco Stadium tonight. Terrence Owens back in at quarterback now for the Toledo Rockets. It's a long uphill climb for them now. Handed off to Adonis Thomas. Finds a little bit of running room. Joe Glenn, the former head coach at Wyoming, Montana, Northern Colorado, and Doan College. 188, 101 career record. Mm. Division II national champions, 1996 and 97 in Northern Colorado. Division I AA national champions at Montana back in 2001. Thank you. One less loss, you could have kept that out of triple digits. <laughs> You don't go back and think about, well, if we could, just could have just figured out a way to get one more somehow. <laughs> Eric Page on the receiving end. Believe me, we were trying. There's that Page again, Eric. Well, they really do find, him. find lots of ways to Certainly. get him the football. And we haven't seen much of him coming on, around on any kind of reverse or anything like that. But certainly in the kicking game and in the passing game, he's a big factor. Third and two for the Rockets. Owens on a keeper, stood up. Probably did not get the first down. Fighting hard. Looks like he's short, maybe a yard. Mark the back. Toledo quarterbacks, uh, Owens four of seven for 28 yards passing. And Austin Danton is 12 of 17, 155, but those two costly interceptions. Great job by the defensive front of Boise State for stopping that quarterback zone, what it was. David Pasquale in it. There's Vince Penza to boot it away. Potter, the received man, catches it out of bounds. Heading down to the field, we're going to shift sports just a little bit. We're at Bronco Stadium for football. We're going to talk some basketball. Here's Jenny Kavanaugh. That's right, guys. First year head coach Leon Rice coming over from Gonzaga. Kind of one of those basketball teams that push all the powerhouses aside like Boise State's been able to do in college football. Coach, do you find that you can maybe bring some of that energy over here to the Broncos? Well, there's a lot of energy here right now with the Boise State football. And, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of magic here right now in, in the whole athletic department. And, you know, we want to take it over to Taco Bell Arena. Have you been able to kind of foster a relationship with Coach Peterson and kind of get some of his thoughts on how they did it here? Oh, no question. And Coach Pete and his staff 
and actually the whole athletic department, everybody involved in, in Boise State Athletics and the university has been so welcoming to myself, my staff, and all our players. Now I know you have a couple of seniors back this year and some new guys. What does the basketball team look for 2010-2011? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, the great thing about it, the cupboard wasn't bare. We got here, there are seven seniors. Uh, they're, they're doing a great job and they're providing good leadership. They're going to be good basketball players. Now, Coach, we've talked about the coaches fraternity and how big that is. One connection you have is with our own Joe Glenn in the booth. You guys were together at uh, University of Northern Colorado back in the day. Maybe just a little tidbit on coach that we don't know? Well, I'll tell you what, everywhere he went, he won national titles. So I just, as soon as he came in the door today, I grabbed him and hugged him and uh, hope some of that, th that greatness rubs off on me. And you got that little reunion yesterday, too. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Joe Dave, we'll send it back to you. All right, Jenny, Broncos on the attack. Uh, Avery had the first down carry for nine, and then uh, Michael Coughlin, the senior backup quarterback, comes in and runs for the first down. So move the chains for the Boise State Broncos, and they continue to shuffle guys in and out of there and give you all kinds of different looks and different personnel. Kellen Moore on a roll now, looking to throw. Back here complete to his tight end, Efa, and that'll be good for nearly first down yard. It should, in fact, should be a first down for the Broncos across midfield. Don Moles on the tackle. All right, Coach, turnabout's fair play. Got any Leon Rice dirt for us or any good stories? This guy. Because he can't answer me. Nah, this guy is legit. He's one of the finest guys in the whole business of basketball. And uh, he was a great football player in high school from Pasco, Washington. And uh, got a great family, three sons, wife Robin, lovely family. And he'll be a great addition to the whole community of Boise, Idaho. There's Doug Martin on a carry for the Broncos. Off left tackle. That plays good for about six yards. Moles again on the tackle. Yeah, they're really looking to jumpstart things in basketball because they, they know it can happen. They've, we've seen it here before for the Boise State uh, basketball team over at Taco Bell Arena. They've hosted NCAA uh, event, basketball events before and that kind of thing. And they've had certainly success in conference in conference competition. So it's there. Leon Rice, you think, is the guy to make it happen. I think last time he was head coach, he was 32 and 1, or 31 and 2 at Yakima Valley Community College uh, before he went to Gonzaga. And that Gonzaga program has obviously had great success. Here's Joe Southwick back in the game for Boise State at quarterback, running a little quarterback draw. Maybe good for a, yet another first down. Archie Donald on the tackle. Do you get the feeling he's the heir apparent? I do. Uh huh, I do. Just nobody's come out and said it, but they say a lot of good things within and around the program about uh, Southwick, and not that there aren't other quarterbacks that will compete. Well, I would say it's more likely than not that Kellen Moore will be back for another year. <laughs> so he may have, to, Southwick may have to wait his turn and get to get some spot duty like he has done here the last couple of weeks. Here's more on a give to Harper. Harper puts his head down and pick or Martin rather. Pick, puts his head down and picks up some yardage. DJ Harper, of course, also part of the running back triumvirate for this Boise State team. Uh, tore, his, uh, tore his knee up in the Oregon State game, had surgery a couple of days ago. He's a prime candidate for a medical red shirt, wants to come back, and you know he's, he's a good kid and a hard worker, and they, they really want him back. And, you know, they, they like the way, not happy about the injury, obviously, but they like the way the running backs kind of support each other. Second and six for the Broncos and Kellen Moore back to throw plenty of time Didn't Really come close to him much tonight. That's a completion and that's a touchdown for Tyler Shoemaker Oh hum. Just another day at the office for Kellen Moore but. I think if you're looking on from Toledo, you got to be wondering what's wrong and I let me let me say something here this is one of the finer football teams in all the country and uh, they are hitting on all eight cylinders right now, and this quarterback is is on fire, and uh, they've done it to a lot of teams. 32-yard touchdown completion. Third of the day for Kellen Moore. Avery has three rushing touchdowns, and we have hit half a hundred for Boise State. Broncos up 50 to seven over the Toledo Rockets. Goes very much in command against the Toledo Rockets. Be sure to join us next Saturday on the WAC Sports Network. We've got a doubleheader, two WAC powerhouses at 6 p.m. Number four ranked Boise State takes on the Spartans in San Jose. Then at 9.30, 
Number 21, Nevada, travels to the islands to battle Hawaii. Spend your Saturday night right here with the WAC Sports Network. We welcome in KFBE in Honolulu, one of our great WSN affiliates. Trevor Harmon to kick it away for Boise State. That one will go into the end zone and will come out to the 20. Scoring drive for Boise State. It was impressive. Let's see what Toledo has up their sleeve in terms of an answer. Special hello also to our uh, folks watching on Sports Time Ohio. Picking up the Wax Sports Network broadcast to watch their Toledo Rockets go up against uh, one of the country's top college football programs. Terrence Owens in a quarterback for the Rockets. Thomas the set back beside him. And here's Thomas on the carry. Not much doing. Little power play that just couldn't get to the point of attack. Too much penetration from that defensive front of Boise State that is really impressive. Tommy Smith playing linebacker came up and made a real nice hit filled the hole. There are the quarterbacks talking things over Kellen saying oh, yeah Joe that, that's how you do it. It's second and nine for Toledo. Owens to throw has a man open and tipped away wow. flag on the play it's coming back tended for Reedy. What a great catch off the tip. Though. Oh they're calling that an interception for Boise Holding State. Holding on the defense number 16 to 10 yard penalty automatic first down. The defensive holding however set it up for Terrence Owens and the Rockets. The interse interception by McKende, the hold is on Fabus. Bring up first and 10 now at the 30. Crowd still into it. Not many have left Bronco Stadium. A beautiful night here. Tight end Noble in motion, and then Owens uh, running for his life. The football's uh -oh. loose. Scramble for it. Looks like Boise State has it again. They're everywhere. You got to wrap the football up and go down with it. But now we get the official indication it is Boise State's oh, yeah. football. Coming out of there is Tyrone Crawford on the fumble recovery. Those young quarterbacks, they he just. Don't know how to hold on to the ball yet. And you got a really strong as, as it defense gets big and strong and uh, you separate those young guys that don't haven't had the weight room experience yet. Need to really pull that ball in and go down with it. All right. Now, so yet another forced turnover for the Broncos. They're in great field position. Speaking of the field, we're heading down to it. Here's Jenny Kavanaugh. Thanks, Dave. You know, Toledo had a very big game just a couple weeks ago against Purdue. They beat them 31 to 20. So two Saints players from the NFL, a guy named Drew Brees, you might have heard of him, and Lance Moore, a former Rocket, they made a nice little friendly wager. Well, the wager happened to be wear a T-shirt of the winning team, and that fell on Drew Brees' shoulders. So if you'll see him, he has a nice little face wearing his Toledo Rocket shirt. A new fan in him, I'm sure he took it off pretty quickly and uh, I'm sure Lance Moore and him will have or Lance I should say has bragging rights at least till the next meeting right. Yep, Drew Brees is uh, in addition to being a great football player a real quality human being. Miracle in New Orleans. Southwick's in a quarterback for Boise State and Kaiserman on the carry here has some running room slams in there to about the 15 yard line. Nampa Idaho. Yep not far from here. Skyview High School. Yeah. He's a fan favorite around here. Got Donovan working for us up here from Nampa. Probably cheering for his buddy there, Kaiserman. Uh, 
Well, they, they've got the Shockers in here, and they're still moving the football. These guys, they want to do good. You can see it. Aaron Burks in at a wide receiver position now, too, for the Broncos. Southwick give it off to Kaiserman. Kaiserman breaks a tackle and out of bounds down around the 10 yard line. Pushed out of bounds by Desmond Merrow. Great stiff arm. Old fashioned. There's your guy. Another one out of Cardinal Mooney High School. Youngstown, Ohio. Desmond Merrow. Bob Stoops, Mike Stoops. Pelini Brothers. Name a few. Second and six from just outside the 10 for Boise State. Joe Southwick operating a quarterback. Toss. Kaiserman on the carry again has plenty of running room down to the five. Broncos knocking on touchdown's door again. 414 to play here in the third quarter. Injured Toledo player on the uh, turf. It's number 23. T.J. Patinikin. Archie Donald, that other linebacker, 42. You know, I'll give I'll give them credit. They they have some some linebackers that can play. Isaiah Ballard's been all over the field. We've talked a lot about him. Moles in the middle makes a lot of tackles. Archie Donald was one that their coach has singled out as a real leader and a quality player. They're just just a bit overmatched. I think that's the strength of their team. Yep. And I wouldn't count them out. Don't blow taps on Toledo yet, Dick. It's a tough trip to come in here for a lot of teams that had the same result. I've been on their sideline. <laughs> well, there's a reason teams don't like to come in here uh, or go into Reno and, and try and ta tangle with uh, the Wolfpack, those kind of places. Probably a reason yeah. BYU canceled their three game. Utah. Was, it, was it Utah? Utah. Excuse me. Visit WACSports.com for the most up to date conference and tournament information. You can also follow WAC Sports on Twitter and Facebook. Third and one. Two tight end set with a fullback. Everything says run and let's yep, play. They've been hammering pass. away with Kaiserman. Let's see if they do it again. Play action. Nope. Fullback. Kaiserman Tailback. slams in there and has the first down. Stop short of the end zone, but that'll set up a first and goal for the Broncos. Kid runs hard, doesn't he? He really, really puts his pads down. Good pad level. Had a good stiff arm on the other run that warded off a tackle. Uh, he's got pretty good quicks, too. Yeah. Six foot, 185 pound sophomore. No quit in Toledo. Kids are rallying to the ball and giving it a great effort. Southwick, the quarterback. Kaiserman again dots the eye. Kaiserman on the carry, puts his pads down there again, and it's going to be stopped short, but it takes about four Toledo Rockets to finally bring him down short of the goal line. Archie Donald, first one on the stop. 6'2, six, six, two, 244. <laughs> Tough customer. Watch this run. Watch how hard he runs and how many, how many Rockets it takes to bring him down. That's, that's some fight. He stopped it on the whistle, and I think after the whistle he fell forward. So still the half yard line for Boise State. Well, Kaiserman did all the work to get him to this point. I would think you reward him, <laughs> reward him again. Yeah, not not, uh, not pull any play action on, on uh, second and goal from the half yard line. I think there's some truth to that. Big guys up front doing a nice job too. Mostly second unit there. It's Kaiserman over the top. Got it. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Boise State. Tough drive. Yep. Hammering going on there. Broncos on the board now leading at 56 to 7. Extra point coming up and maybe a special treat for us as a result of that score, too. Stay, stay tuned. Oh. <laughs> Where is it? Brotsman to kick the extra point. You know, they have a tradition here that the cheerleaders do push-ups after touchdowns. 
Kick is up and good. It's 57 to 7. Boise State laying the lumber on Toledo. Push up time. Who's got it in him? Jenny Kavnar. Oh, yeah, she does. <laughs> 57's a lot. I don't know. Go, Jenny. Fifty-seven, seven. I don't know if Jenny got fifty-seven push-ups in or not here, but even if she did, they don't count. They're knee push-ups. No, that's a lot of work. <laughs> Jenny's in the gym. All right, you let's see that. if she's out of breath after all that, Jenny. Yeah, thanks a lot, Coach. At least he's sticking up for me. I already worked it out today. I'm here with Sean, who saw me do some real push-ups. I had to drop to my knees. I'm not trained like you guys are, but you were telling me off camera you love when they score, but you know the pain's about to come. The pain is about to come, and our bodies definitely can feel it when we're up, you know, 50, what, 57 to uh, 7 right now. Well, I believe last year, I think the most we did was about 350 in a game. 350 a game. Match that in the booth, you guys. Come on. I know she can do them all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure there's enough Advil in the world to uh, recover from that kind of workout. <laughs> Isaiah Ballard, that linebacker returning kicks again out to about the 30-yard line. Total yards here. We're looking at Boise State, 432. And the Toledo Rockets, 211. We just got word that Oregon State beat Arizona. Austin Denton coming back in at quarterback. Might put a little more importance on that win over Oregon well, State. Yeah, knocks, knocks Arizona down a few pegs, and uh, exactly, it also you know, validates the, the win here a couple of weeks ago for Boise State over Oregon State a little bit more, too. And now we got to vote Boise back leapfrog over somebody. And there's Williams on the carry. Finds a little bit of running room. And Boise State and WAC fans are going to be cheering for Oregon State final week of the regular season, too, when they go up against Oregon. You would think a lot of football, a lot of water yet to go under the bridge. About halfway. Morgan Williams is from Kenton McKinley, Dave, one of the. That's a football fact. Great high school football schools in the history of high school football. I think I might lose this one, but I know Bob Cummings coached back there, and I'm not sure. Uh, I met him when he was still alive. I think he coached at McKinley. But I know McKinley that and Cincinnati Moeller, those, those would be two of the, the big ones. And this high school football. Ball's loose again. It's down. They're going to call him down on this one. It's Tyrone Crawford in the He's been in the middle of some things here in the second half. Ricky Chongachu also, backup defensive lineman, having a nice game, nice second half. Part of that Netherlands connection, overseas connection. Yeah, I was, I was asking about that yesterday a little bit. That, that? A couple of couple of, couple of kids from Amsterdam, Netherlands, that came here and played college, played high school football in the area. Boise High, or one of the other surrounding high schools, for a year or two, and have ended up playing for playing for the Broncos. Tough kids. Austin Dan, back to throw, has time here, and throws it out here. Nice catch. Complete to Page. Page. Wow. Across the 40 out of bounds, diving out about the 43. That'll be a first down for the Rockets with 19 seconds to play here in the third quarter. What an acrobatic catch. Dan was taking some pressure and got the ball off, and it was behind him, and he le leapt in the air, reached back behind him, and pirouetted, caught the ball, came down his feet. I really Great like, up. you know, there's, there's some flashes of talent with this Toledo team, and you really talk to their coaching staff, and in particular Tim Beckman, their head coach, but all of their coaches that we had a chance to visit with, they seem to really have things, you know, for the long term, very much headed in the right direction. Along with Coach Joe Glenn, Jenny Kavnar, out of breath from all those push-ups. I'm Dave Harbison. Glad you joined us for the first three quarters here at Bronco Stadium. You're watching the WAC Sports Network, a production of Learfield Sports. Fifty point lead for the Boise State Broncos our delivery of the game is presented by Chicago Connection the official pizza of the Boise State Broncos and here it is Kellen Moore to Kyle Efa the big tight end three touchdown passes on the day for Kellen Moore continues to climb up the charts there are his numbers you'd have to think his evening is done at least as far as football is concerned. 
<laughs> First and ten for the Toledo Rockets from the their own 43-yard line. Austin Danton continues the quarterback. Ooh. Takes a big hit, gets a couple of yards, and falls forward across the 45. But he paid for that one, Coach. Jonathan Brown. And Danton's slow to get up. Oh, boy. Johnson's 5'10", 197-pound freshman. Alameda, California, Ensign Hall High School. Tell you what, he brought the wood. Tough customer. Yep, that was a big hit. Hear that one. Hope he's okay. He's 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 acquitted himself quite well under kind of adverse circumstances here against a very, uh, very good and very intense and tenacious defensive unit. He's hung hung tough and made some plays. Just get all hung up and all the offense that you see in the passing and the prolific offense, but this defense is number one defense in the United States and. Statistically in total defense, and that's 120 teams in Division One. So that's quick timeout here while they attend to Austin Danton. Keep you posted on his situation when we come back in a minute. 57 7, Broncos leading. Austin Danton, the Toledo quarterback's the injured player. They continue to take a look at him and Unfortunately, they've now brought out the backboard and the uh, the gurney for uh, Austin Danton. We'll keep you updated on his condition as we move forward. This copyrighted telecast is the property of Learfield Sports, under rights granted by the Western Athletic Conference. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, reproduction, or other dissemination or use of this telecast or any part of it without the express written consent of Learfield Sports is prohibited. So Austin Danton remains down on the field. He's out of Tallahassee, Florida, 6'2", 189-pound sophomore. And we're heading to break now. We'll hopefully get an update on his condition when we come back in a moment, his teammates and even his opponents on the Boise State sidelines looking a bit concerned. Back at Broncos Stadium in Boise, it's Austin Danton, the Toledo quarterback, getting a... Big hand from the, the crowd here as well as the, the, the players on both sidelines. Obviously very concerned about the, the young Toledo quarterback. He's a, he's a bright kid too. He's an engineering major. Both of his parents are engineers and run their own firm. And uh, he's a, a heck of a student. They've had to adjust their media schedule because of his class load. And he's also their, their starting quarterback and one of their leaders. So get you updated on his condition as best we can. Terrence Owens takes over a quarterback, and he's seen quite a bit of action already tonight. Here's the southpaw on a roll with the throw to Eric Page. That's complete and out of bounds about the 45-yard line. Excellent job by Terrence uh, Owens getting his shoulders squared up. Sprinting out to the right for a left-hand quarterback is not easy, and worked his feet, squared him up, and threw a strike outside to first down. Good job, Terrence. You know, one of our keys to the game was was turnovers and especially Toledo being able to force turnovers. They were plus seven in turnover margin. Well, the Broncos have been the team forcing the turnovers. They have forced five of them. There's a little wildcat from Toledo for Morgan Williams. A little bit of a pickup there. Turnover margin here is Boise State five and Toledo zero. That's a big part of the score right now. And the turnovers have really done Toledo in. Now a lot of the backups obviously are in for Boise State and trying try to make a name for themselves, and it's a great opportunity. And last week against New Mexico State, a bunch of guys jumped up and, and, and played well. And you know, whether it, whether it, whether it uh, translates into playing time this year or it's a year or two down the road, this is a great experience. There's Owens on a keeper on a roll. Throws out here complete. That's to uh, James Green, number eight, out of Miami, Florida. Boy, guy from my neighborhood, Paradise Valley High School, Ebenezer McKinday, if I got that right. It's a tackle there, 5'11", 171-pound freshman out of Paradise Valley, which is down in the hood. Looks like Green is the injured player for Toledo now, so another one down for the Rockets. And the medical staff will come across the field and Take, take a look at that situation. Let's take a look on the replay, see if we can pick up what happened. 
He's fighting for extra yardage and gets twisted around a little bit. Ouch. McKendy was the defender as you talked about. Got that knee twisted underneath him and couldn't get it, couldn't get it loose. There's your guy from Nampa just down the road a piece, uh, Coach. Matt Kaiserman, the running back for Boise State Broncos. He got in on that last drive, and they played some power football, didn't they? They sure did, and this kid showed up. He got in behind the big guys, and come on, fella. And we're going to recognize Matt Kaiser as our subway sub of the game. That's a good call. Well, I like it, too. Footballer. Tough kid. Big smile on his face, as you might expect. Green being uh, helped off the field. A little more weight on that than I thought maybe he would have been given the, the twisting of the knee, so maybe he'll be okay. Hope so. Looks like he's on his, on his own pretty good here as he nears the Toledo sideline. It's third and two for Toledo now. Out of the shotgun, it's Terrence O. Empty backfield. Getting some direction from the center, the senior Kevin Kowalski. We'll make sure everybody's on the same page. Motion to one back and the give. They give it off. That's Williams and Williams forward to uh, close to the 30 yard line and that'll be good for a Toledo first down. Austin Danton, uh, the quarterback took that big hit earlier and was helped off the field on the cart. Let's check in with Jenny Kavnar and see what kind of update we have. Jenny? Yeah, guys, a very scary moment. But Brian Gallagher, the head trainer, is saying that Austin was coherent and conscious. It seems like it is just a precautionary measure. Again, great to see his teammates, though. I'll come over and kind of give him a good luck sign before he left the field. And the PA announcer here at Bronco Stadium also wishing him luck. Again, looks like it was just precautionary, guys. All right, and on the carry, it is Williams around left tackle and has some running room. Breaks a tackle to the 10. Finally pushed down at about the seven yard line. Nice run from Morgan Williams. Student body sweep. A couple guys out in front of him. Watch the blocking out in front. Good job. He bounces it. Nice job by the wideout blocking number 80. This guy knows what to do with the football. Tim Cortazzo, nice block. You know, I, I always am, am just blown away by the sportsmanship. When a guy gets injured like Austin Danton is, they have to take him off like that. But the, the other team really rallies around and keeps everything in perspective. And give Boise State credit on that front. It's a brotherhood, there's no doubt. A little wildcat now for Williams. And that'll bring up second and goal. Comes Noble in the game. You think he brought his own number in? He had a may well beautiful catch on a quarterback. Williams, the running back, set to the left of Owens. Tight formation. Owens keeps it, throws it over the middle. Oh, and yeah. There you go. Coach <laughs> called that one. Danny Noble. Second touchdown of the season for Noble. Elyro, Ohio. Yeah, they faked the play action right in the middle, sucked up the linebackers, and Noble slipped. He was wide open. Yeah, he did. He, great fake by the quarterback, great fake by the fullback, and I, I can't see. I know the fullback was Hank Ke Keegley prior to that play. Bill Klaus to try and add the extra point. He does. He's taken over. The, he was the punter to start the season. Had to take over the place kicking when the regular kicker was injured a couple of weeks ago. And so now he's doing the kicking, but not the punting. Figure that out, if you will. But, um, Toledo's on the board. 57-14. Boise State out in front. Keep it right here during this timeout. Uh, most of the crowd has hung around here at Bronco Stadium. A few have filtered out here, but it's been a great atmosphere. Just a beautiful night for college football along the banks of the river. And, Got the uh, fourth 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 ranked team in the country uh, in town. They support it extremely well. It's been a fun night. Sure has. They love their Broncos and they want to see who the new ones are. So they're yep. going to stay and cheer on the, the younger guys. 
Uh, and one of the one of the guys it's certainly he's, he's been a factor in this program for a long time but Jeremy Avery's had a big game with three touchdowns he's getting an opportunity to play again because of an injury to DJ Harper and DJ Harper had a big role in the Broncos season opening win over Virginia Tech coming back from any injury last year he breaks this long touchdown run for the Broncos in that win over uh, Virginia Tech and then in the Oregon State game he injured his knee again is out for the remainder of the season that provides an opportunity for Jeremy Avery. Here's the here's the kickoff for uh, Boise State, and the return will be out of bounds at about the 25 yard line. We mentioned uh, the DJ Harper injury against Oregon State. Here is that play. Didn't seem to be that big a deal at the time, but he planted wrong and tore up the knee again, the same knee after having gone through all the rehab and just planted wrong, and the turf the turf didn't give and out for the season again but is committed to rehabbing and you know again we talk about the, the fact two two aspects of this that these guys all pull for each other even though they're competing for playing time they're all pulling for each other there's no question there seniors are wanting the young guys to pick up where they left off and, and want the production they want to be the best team Boise's ever had the replacement in this case is no slouch Avery was second team all whack last year at over 1100 yards Boise State on the run now. Jarvis Hodge is your ball carrier. 639 yards rushing for Avery in 2008. Eight touchdowns and over 600 yards in 2007. Last year he had 269 all-purpose yards in a game against Fresno State. So he's been there and done that before for Boise State. Gets an opportunity because of the injury to D.J. Harper and making the most of it now. I'm asking for help here, fellas, but uh, how many of those touchdowns were out of Wildcat? Today, Couple? I believe one, one on a Wildcat, one on a kind of a reverse, and one on a more standard would okay. be my recollection. That's but you know, my memory's not what it used to be. So. Take that. <laughs> Hodge again on the carry. Coughlin's in there at quarterback now. The senior Matt Coughlin operating at quarterback. More on his story. Let's check in down to the field with Jenny Kavanaugh. Yeah, we talked to offensive coordinator Brian Harson yesterday. He was saying he's so impressed with the way that Mike Coughlin has handled his position as a backup quarterback here at Boise State. He's a senior this year, yet him and Kellen have remained great friends. They prepare the same. Coughlin says every single week he prepares as if he is going to be the start in the game because he never knows when his opportunity is going to come. And Coach Harson said he deserves to play and that's exactly what's happening in games like this when the Broncos are ahead by a lot. Hodge again on the carry. Decent gain there and actually last week coach Coughlin got in early in the game and scored the Broncos first touchdown on a uh, quarterback keeper against New Mexico State. Good looking guy. San Diego California Mira Mesa High School. Good for you Michael. Homecoming. Yeah. Senior year. Pretty important to him I believe. Yeah I believe so. Kodak and moment. Coaches talked about him as being an idea guy who you know, comes up with, with a plan of attack or a, maybe an idea for a play or something that might work and they bounce things around. It's a collaborative process between the head coach and the coordinator and the quarterbacks. They all get together on it. And this guy's tuned in. Team player. Got to have him. Hodge again pushing the pile a little bit up close to midfield. It's a little tough sledding when they know you're going to run every time. <laughs> and it's uh, we're going to see a little rugby here in the fourth quarter. Special welcome also tonight to WNOL in New Orleans, part of the WAC Sports Network. Appreciate you folks tuning in. Nolens. Love it. Third and one for the Broncos. And I'm guessing, like you are, probably another run coming. <laughs> Still a lot of good football players on the field right now on both sides of the ball. Wow. Yeah, big collision there. Boy, I'll tell you what, <laughs> jumping into the hole. I think he ended up plowing forward probably for enough yardage on the first down, but that's Draylon Free on the hit on Hodge. I mean, Hodge brought it, Free <laughs> brought it. There used to be an old expression. I know it as be your own blocker. That is BYOB right there. Wow, what a collision. Two tough guys getting busy. 
Boise State up 57-14, gets a new set of downs here. You know, the Broncos have gotten a lot of national publicity here during the course of the uh, uh, of the early part of the season with the Virginia Tech game and uh, the ESPN folks coming out here a couple of weeks ago for the Oregon State game. And right after that, they really kind of hit the jackpot in that in that sense. And you're, you're, you're hoping that, it, that the jinx does not apply because right after that win over Oregon State, Boise State Broncos were on the national cover of Sports Illustrated. <laughs> I'm going to say one on Draylon Pree. He's from Steubenville, Ohio. I grew up watching the Cornhuskers, and they had a running back named Light Horse Harry Wilson back in the 60s from Steubenville. Anybody in Steubenville remember Harry? Harry Wilson, great running back for Bob Devaney and the old Cornhuskers. Chris Peterson has kept his team ready for the challenge regardless of what that challenge might be is it a big time game at a neutral site with 80,000 for Virginia Tech is it a Fiesta Bowl or is it New Mexico State last week or homecoming in a game where you're a prohibitive favorite like tonight they just keep keep the train rolling it's it's a real credit to the coaches the players the whole program that they can maintain that intensity and that fight and that spirit and that improvement they call stay dialed in uh, playing with high energy playing fast and they do it time after time after time real tribute to the program but knowing Chris Peterson and the rest of the coaches on this, this staff they'll, they'll be looking at film here in the next couple of days and finding fault oh, yeah. <laughs> you're when this happens you're never as good as you think you are and <laughs> When Toledo goes back and looks at the film, they'll never be as bad as There's you know, Kaiserman again, breaking a couple of tackles, and he's forward to about the 28-29 yard line. He made the the sub play of the game, huh? He did. I love it. It's a good call. Continuing a quarterback is Coughlin, the, the senior, and you talked about it. It's a big moment for him. Trying to lead his team on a, a scoring drive here. Trying to put the Broncos over the point a minute mark, too. First and, and 10 at the plus 29. Yeah, and, you know, however you feel about the system, a 60, a 60 goes up on the board and the the pollsters of various parts of the country that may not even may not even see the highlights, much less the game, will see a 60, and that, that impresses them. They might want to think that Boise tried to lay it on them, but they've they've run the ball the whole fourth quarter. They've played three quarterbacks, four or five running backs that. Uh, yeah, but but when, yeah, you play your second and third team right. guys certainly, but you you can't tell them to dial it down and not play hard or not try and score. They've been very conservative in the play calling here. They've thrown oh, yeah. a pass most of this fourth quarter. Wright is in the game and running back, and he's got the football now and has some running room down to about the 12 yard line. That's Drew Wright, number 39. Let's check out our hit of the game brought to you by Nampa Floors and Interiors. We get to Floored.net for Bronco Nation Savings. I got it. There it was. Well, that play from a moment Nampa. ago. Wow. That was, that was Hodge and Pre. The collision. Get this, Dave. Drew Wright, 5'9, 198 pound tailback. Nampa, Idaho. Valley View High School. Nampa. Backs. Drew Wright on the carry once again for Boise State. Getting all the backup backs in. Kaiserman and Hodge and Drew Wright. Doug Martin and Jeremy Avery. Did most of the tough work early on. Avery that, with the three touchdowns. Pretty pretty light night actually for Doug Martin. So he'll be well rested for uh, next week, and that's I'm sure great news for the San Jose State squad because <laughs> he gets it going. He's a load. Strong runner. Not much doing this time on the right side of the line. Flag on the play. 
Legal hands to the face on the offense number 79. Ooh. 15 yard penalty, still second down. That's on uh, Bronson Durant, the backup center. It's hard when you're in goal line offense, goal line defense, and everybody's trying to get low and you're pushing your hands up in there. And hard to call on that goal line situation like that. Back it up all the way to the 24 yard line. Call it third and 23. Coughlin on the pitch. Nothing That's going to be a loss. All the way back to the 30 yard uh, path back past the 30 yard line. So they're moving out of field goal range, coach. <laughs> I think they'll run it out. Yeah. 142 left in the game, 57 to 14. Fourth and fourth and 30 now. Obviously in no particular hurry here. It'd be another impressive win for the Boise State Broncos, and they just need to to keep the keep the train running, as we said, and got a couple of tough whack opponents along the way. See what happens elsewhere around the college football landscape. They already got a big uh, boost from South Carolina today, knocking off number one Alabama. Ohio State was pretty impressive in their win over Indiana today. Indiana hasn't played anybody this year, so I, I don't know how I can put much credence in that. I, they have really played a cream puff schedule, and uh, I think they're Michigan State is certainly a team on the rise. Wow, how about that? Coming up with a win over Michigan, the Big whole win. situation with their head coach Mark D'Antonio. Good for Mark. Good to see him getting healthy. Yep. Watch from the press box. Fourth down play for the Broncos. 33 seconds to go. And they will wind the clock down. And this one will be in the history books. 57 14. Boise State. Uh, check. Taking a break right here, and then we'll come back with a wrap up from Broncos Stadium in Boise. An impressive performance by the Boise State Broncos. About to put the cap on it. Alex Petit is in uh, at quarterback for Toledo now in the final seconds of this one. Give it off to David Pasquale on the carry. May get one more play in here. Kellen Moore and company. Kellen's, Kellen's had the helmet off for a while. That'll be it. And the clock will run out. And the Boise State Broncos put up a 57-14 victory over the visiting Toledo Rockets from the Mid-American Conference. Back to wrap it up in a moment. You're watching the Wax Sports Network, a production of Learfield Sports.